This is an optimistic story about keeping pollutants out of the Grand Traverse Bay in spite of the growing number of severe storms in northern Michigan. Our focus is on the beautiful little village of Sutton's Bay. Like many small towns in northwest lower Michigan, there are inviting stores and restaurants fronted by wide sidewalks along busy streets, often filled with parked cars. Just a few blocks downhill, we find the village marina and inviting public beaches. All pretty idyllic until it rains. Then all those rooftops, sidewalks, and streets become runways for water, pouring storm water into the streets and sewers, all heading downhill into the bay. But the village of Sutton's Bay is working with the Watershed Center to better deal with the downpour. Here's the Watershed Center's program director, Sarah Uren. One of the big problems that we find in our watershed is stormwater runoff. We don't have a lot of industrial pollution. We don't have a lot of point sources of pollution. What we have is stormwater runoff, which is basically a non-point source pollution. So the water, you know, rain or snow falls on the ground. When the snow melts and the rain runs off, it picks up all the pollutants that are on the ground and it runs off into the nearest uh, body of water. So sometimes that's a river, sometimes that's a lake, sometimes it's straight into Grand Traverse Bay. And what we find is there's all sorts of things on the ground that get picked up along the way. There's uh, sediment, there's toxic fertilizers and pesticides and herbicides, there's dirt, there's nutrients, there's uh, you know waste from pets and that sort of thing. So all these things run off into the nearest body of water and it can contaminate it. Village manager Wally Del Matter saw the impact of stormwater firsthand as it fouled the beaches of Sutton's Bay. During significant rain events, one of the drains was right near my office, and when it would rain, you could see the black plume shoot out into the bay and start spreading, so we took pictures of it. And that kind of was a catalyst to start moving forward with, uh, how can we cure that? How can we keep that from getting into the bay? Working together, the Village and Watershed Center secured a grant from the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative under the US EPA to design and build a series of rain gardens throughout the village and a number of infiltration pipes with oil separators to remove even more pollution before the water is released to a wetland near the bay. What we've been finding is that uh, we need to taking the first flush and infiltrating the first flush of water because that typically is the dirtiest as the rain falls, it washes off the pavements and the rooftops and the parking lots and that's the dirtiest water. So what we want to do is make sure that we treat that and make sure the water's cleaner before it gets into the bay or nearest body of water. And what we've been finding over the last several years is that we are getting heavier rain events. So that first flush of water is actually a lot more than it used to be. So we need to make sure that we size our systems appropriately now to make sure that we can still capture that first flush and it doesn't blow the whole system out. So I'm sitting here in one of the rain gardens that we installed in the village of Sutton's Bay. And basically rain gardens are shallow depressions in the ground. They don't have to be too deep. And the depressions in the ground where you would collect stormwater runoff coming from a rooftop, coming from a parking lot, coming from a road, as in the system we have here. And what happens is that water goes into that rain garden. You plant it with native plants, native grasses, you have milkweed here, different sorts of native plants that are designed to live in the climate that you are in. And the water comes into the rain garden and infiltrates into the ground naturally. So what happens is all that water running off does not ever make it to a body of water because it goes into the ground naturally the way it, the way it originally did before we paved the whole village and put rooftops and parking lots in. So uh, why we like native plants, uh, first is they're designed to live in the climate, so they really require little water once they get established. They're designed to live here, they're designed for the winter that we have, they're designed for the summers that we have, and also they have really deep root systems. And why we care about that is that the root systems go down in the ground and help the plant live throughout the summer when it might not rain, but also it helps the water infiltrate into the ground. So the water follows those uh, channels made into the dirt through the root systems. And then those root systems also soak up a lot of water, they use up a lot of the nutrients, they trap the pollutants, they, uh, there's different microbial things going on in the soil that break down oils and greases, they, uh, they break down and they kill any pathogens and viruses and that sort of thing from the you know, any animal waste that might be running off. When the evaluation for a storm drain system was done, we had looked at 43 rain gardens somewhere in that neighborhood approximately. So as we've been doing our little street projects or replacing streets, areas where a rain garden 
could be put in, we're putting them in. So we've put in another rain garden since then on our own. They're working really well.